Good morning. This is Angela with today's A Cup of Tea. Very different topic for today. Something I have not covered. And uh, very important, though, because it is actually coming up more and more. In fact, the last couple of weeks, it has been top of... I can't, I can't even uh, believe how many times it's come up in different conversations and working with people and working with myself. It's just amazing. So... The topic itself is talking about um, how we are eliminating duality and, and doing so how to deal and do sh- what they call shadow work and working with our shadow side to eliminate it. <clears throat> and, but I'm going to back up a little bit and talk a little bit about this. Um, you know, if, if you're sort of wondering specifically about what I mean with duality, it's the belief that, you know, you have to have a black with a white, a high and a low, um, a good and a bad, and all that. So, You know, my understanding is we went through this entire, we've gone through this entire existence here, and we have chosen that the core of this is to experience what if we had to have duality? What if we chose to be, now first of all, the initial duality is separateness from the one, separateness from creator and the divine, and and that perception to feel like we are, and putting veils up to pretend that we are. That was the initial duality right there. And then from that, we created an entire existence around all of that. So, you know, we're here at this point, we're at the summit of this existence, we're at the summit of this experience, and we're ready to move on to the next existence. And we're done. And my understanding is we're done with duality. We've done it. We did it really, really well. It's so much so that we have it really at the core of us. And so the part of the challenge is remembering how to exist without duality. And without duality, meaning that in essence, The only absolute I understand in this universe is love. No opposites, that there is only love and there's nothing else. And and anything else is something we've made up. It's sort of the masquerade we've had, which is great that this comes up in October (laughs) during the Halloween season. But, you know, I have a great metaphor for this. And, And what's really funny though is in, in the work we're doing, all the spiritual movement, this is spiritual um, evolution that we're working through, one of the things that we tend to forget is, um, not, not forget, is we're trying to change the way we approach things, but yet put a different box, put the same box around the, a different approach. And in many ways we're approaching trying to be without duality with the box of duality as a guidance, but we're throwing away the boxes. So, you know, I have a great metaphor, excuse my cat, who <laughs> had his five cents, but um, we're, one of the great metaphor, a good metaphor I have is when I left corporate America in 2006, I left to start an organic herb nursery. And it was something completely different from anything I had ever done. I had um, done organic gardening from like probably about 2000 and before that all conventional what they call conventional gardening which is yeah using like the blue stuff and regular fertilizer chemical stuff before I realized that yeah putting all that stuff on the plants not only harms the earth but then goes into my mouth I might as well just put it on a spoon and put it in my mouth but that's a discussion for a different day so I had changed over to organic gardening and then I decided I was going to start an organic herb nursery well I shifted no first of all my first shift was from conventional gardening to organic gardening then my second shift was from that garden size gardening to commercial size gardening where I was working with 5,000 square feet of greenhouse space and about 2,500 square feet of bed space outside. <clears throat> so a big jump and that was a big jump and that's really equivalent and very metaphorical to what we're going through right now. It's sort of like from that little backyard garden to a commercial size thing in like one step. That's really where we're going. <clears throat> and so I got a little daunted. And at first, I found that um, what many people do when they first shift into organic gardening and organic production is I would still, I would apply new methods with the same box as conventional gardening. I would still think of things as like, oh my gosh, these plants need something on them. I need to spray them with something. And I'd find an organic spray that was okay to use and everything. And, um, and then I would go in that cycle. But then I found that I was going in the same cycles as conventional gardening, is that I would still have the same bug problems. I would still have the same problems with, <coughs> with the different, um, you know, fungus and things like that. And, and I just didn't understand, like, how, you know, and so I was sort of running the same boat with a different format. Well, as I learned more and I became more comfortable in that environment, 
I learned to be a little more patient. I learned to look at things differently. I learned that if I allowed it to flow, if I allowed things a little extra time, that the natural food chain would work, would fall into place. You would have insects that would come and help with the bad, you know, the harmful insects. You would have, you know, I would have um, one thing would happen that would balance out another thing. And so it would naturally take care of itself um, and resolve and become all in one kind of thing and, and balanced. So, <clears throat> so it's very metaphorical to what we're going through in this experience of getting rid of duality or, or resolving duality. And, and part of that is doing what they call shadow work. And we start doing this work on ourselves. We clear out all this gunk, we, you know, the stuff that we just have all this residual junk, you know, um, regrets, resentments, rejections, anxieties, fears, um, beliefs that we've instilled in ourselves to limit ourselves in different ways and to help us forget that we have full empowerment within ourselves. And now we're trying to remember, we're coming back to remembering that. We're going through this process of getting rid of all that stuff. But what happens is we have some stuff that we keep buried deep down because we still have judgments on it. We still have judgments on ourselves saying, that is not a good part of me. That is not a part of me I want to look at. And you know, <clears throat> and so a lot of times what happens is we take the standard approach of trying to heal it without accepting it first. And yeah, part of what I'm understanding and a lot of the work that I've been doing lately, lately is as, as beliefs come in, as situations come in to resolve, I understand there's really more of a process and more of a flow. The big lesson I had a couple months ago was how to be fluid and how to stay fluid through um, instead of re and instead of applying resistance, and that was a big shift in itself. The next step then is allowing things to flow, right? So you're allowing things to flow, and then accepting them. Now and then after not only accepting them, embracing them and then it resolves itself and then you can release it. It's a completely different way of, of looking thing, at things, but we're, we've been trying so hard to um, just, okay, yeah, I learned how to heal things and I learned how to resolve them and release them, so I'm just gonna do that. And I really don't wanna look at it, but yet there's still a part of us that's judging what, what that particular part of us is about. And so we, we don't wanna look at it and we give it energy by not looking at it and we grow it. And then there comes this, there, there becomes these big, um, obstacles that we create for ourselves and we look at it because we look at it as bad um, in one way or another instead of looking at it for what it is and accepting it as part of ourselves and embracing it and when you do that when you're embracing it and you're giving yourself unconditional love regardless of whether you, you know re regardless of whether it's a shadier side of you or a more shadow side of you then what happens is you eliminate that shadow and there goes the duality because everything comes from love everything comes my understanding is you know the basis of the universe the only absolute is love and if everything truly if we come back to that then even what we consider dark and bad and ugly is still part of love it's just a different facet of it and something that we created to have this lesson and it's really it can be very challenging to grasp for many people and I found that I've come to this point where the, what's left in, in many respects are some of the shadow things that I didn't want to look at. <clears throat> and it's not necessarily what you would call bad or dark or evil, but just something that I hadn't accepted within myself and embraced. You know, um, I, I had a class I took once. The instructor was talking about um, his um, sort of one of his moments of enlightenment happened when he woke up in the middle of the night one night he said you know the family's all sleeping and he was he wakes up and he felt the presence of this really really dark energy and he was terrified he was paralyzed he couldn't do anything he was like in a, in a cold sweat and everything and then at some point he realized that that was actually a facet of himself that was there next to his bed and he, um, he was still scared for a couple minutes, but at some, something clicked in him, and he put his heart out to it, and he said, you know what? You are a part of me, and I love you for who you are right now and for the experience this has provided for us in the process. 
And then he said it just completely disappeared instantaneously. So this is a really big topic, um, but it's something to think about, and it's it's really some a new way to start thinking in terms of clearing out our gunk. And yes, many much of our gum can be done, but when we when we come up with all the stuff that's deeper and what we want to hide and and what we want to bury within ourselves because we're afraid to look at it or we we judge it against ourselves, that's that's a total um, red flag as to okay, look at me, look at me, and accept me, and love me, embrace me, allow it to flow, embrace it, and then we can eliminate it because then it will just resolve and dissolve into us as the light that we are. So on that, I'm going to let you have a good day. We'll talk to you later in the week. This is Angela with a cup of tea.